But now you would think, Brian, since this list is coming from the top, this dictum is being handed down from the office, that all the administrative help of the AEW empire would be on board with this. They'd all be pulling the same rope. All the top wrestlers, and especially ones who have been trusted with office positions, would be, yes, we got to do this. And, of course, standing right in the front of the line to say, yes, we need some guidance is, of course, the star of our show, Twinkle Toes McFinger Bang, who has just done an interview saying, don't tell me how to f***ing wrestle. <laughs> can, can we get some enlightenment on uh, Harpo's comments on this topic? Well, this is an article, a surprise, surprise, from SI.com by Justin Barrasso. July 13th, 2023. Ah, uh, Justin, Justin, I know you got to support all those illegitimate kids, but you're, you're integrity, man. Kenny Omega dismisses critics who say he's too reckless. Quote, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Some observers thought the Tiger driver in his match against Will Ospreay was needlessly dangerous. Now, Omega now, wait, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You just blew by that like everybody knows what a fucking Tiger driver is. 98. It's where, is that the year? Was that the vintage? 93. 94. That's where Excalibur 95. got that commentary style from. He's been drinking Thunderbird with a vintage, <laughs> vintage of Tuesday. <laughs> but anyway, so where was I going? Were you distracted by uh, You it? tell me. I And we'll both know. That's what Tiger Driver Hunt used to say. The Tiger Driver, it's where... Ostrich picked him up like for a double arm pedigree or whatever the fuck and turned him upside down and just let him go. And remember when we called at the time, we said it didn't, it didn't look like a botch. It looked like he actually meant to do it. Come to find out the fucking morons meant to do it. He picked Kenny up and dropped him right on his fucking head and Kenny's head and neck folded up in between his shoulders and the mat. They're fucking idiots. They don't know how to work, so they work shitty and say it's on purpose. But again, the sub-headline here, some observers thought the Tiger driver in his match against Will Ospreay was needlessly dangerous. Omega doesn't want to hear it. Now again, the last article was a bit of a puff piece on Moxley. Let's see how this one goes. Transcendent athletes need the opportunity to create. If you wouldn't tell Patrick Mahomes how to play wait, quarterback. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Is this the article or is this Kenny's quotes about himself? No, this is the article part. I'll tell you this what it's a This is the quote. article. The first comment was transcendent athletes. Need the opportunity to create. Oh, God. If you wouldn't tell Patrick Mahomes how to play quarterback or question the way Nikola Jokic operates his inside-outside game. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's, who does Nick Jokic play for? He's a Serbian basketball player here in the States now. Uh, and he's pretty good. Uh, or it, even, he, gets, he, he gets in the locker room with the name Jokic. He's already tougher than anybody on the AEW roster. Or even the finer points of hitting or pitching to Shohei Otani. Then why are people telling Kenny Omega how to wrestle? Oh, good Lord. It is a question Omega has grappled with since last month's Forbidden Door pay-per-view. This isn't... The only thing that Kenny's been grappling with since last month's Forbidden Door pay-per-view was what he's containing in his right or left hand, depending if he's ambidextrous. <laughs> I've heard he can do both. <laughs> Hold on. That isn't to imply... Omega discarded people's genuine well wishes after taking a devastating looking Tiger driver at the pay per view, where he was effectively dumped on his head by Will Ospreay. Omega appreciates people caring about his health, but also feels he has earned the right as an artist to wrestle a style that he believes will be the most effective. Omega's creativity was on full display at Forbidden Door against Ospreay. This was a rematch of their exceptional Omega, bouts. Omega's, Omega's creativity was on full display when both of them landed on their heads multiple times in the course of the evening. This was a rematch of their exceptional bout at Wrestle Kingdom in January. And somehow, the sequel exceeded the original. An integral reason why the match was so emotional was the Tiger Driver. 
What? Throughout the story <laughs> of the match, Osprey could not muster the strength to break Omega's fighting spirit. So he, I can't believe this. So he instead broke him with the Tiger Driver, oh. which led to the finishing sequence. Sports Illustrated. Just shy of the 40 minute mark. Let's stop for a second. This is sports, SI.com. Nothing more needs to be said. In the ensuing weeks, Omega has repeatedly heard that the move is too dangerous, yet he is the painter holding the brush. <laughs> and ultimately, he decides how the art unfolds on the canvas. He's fucking that dog. You're just holding his head. <laughs> Here's a quote from Kenny Omega. There are a lot of people criticizing who don't have my best interests at heart. More, Says, more breath, more breathiness. It's hard. I haven't done this one in a while. I'm thinking of Kevin Patrick. Says Omega, who is 39-year-old Tyson Smith. They just, I'm, I'm just going to read his quotes. They yeah. just want to put a dark mark on that match, which is a performance I'm extremely proud of. And performances like that will be few and far between as I get older and older. Well, we can thank goodness for that. Providing insight into why the move was so valuable to the heartbeat of the match, Omega shared a detailed view of its significance. In terms of a live and physical performance, I've never seen anything more mind-blowing, skill-wise, performance-wise, production-wise, than Cirque du Soleil, says the Canadian-born star. Who was on He did No, he what now? You're fucking making shit up. I, I swear to God, I just read this and thought they wrote it for you. This is exactly Wait, what I was it about says. to say, no, nobody's <laughs> believing this now. You're doing this. What? In terms of live and physical performance. Pinky, pinky swear he said this. I pinky swear both pinkies. In terms of a live and physical performance, I've never seen anything more mind blowing, skill wise, performance wise, production wise. Then Cirque du Soleil. Oh my God, does anybody wonder why I couldn't be in a room with this fucking guy for five minutes? Says the Canadian-born star who was honored to wrestle one of the more spectacular matches of his career at Forbidden Door in Toronto. Here's a quote. To me, that's the peak form of that style of entertainment. As I watch these shows and their stunts and their compositions for every scene, it is rare for me to go, that looks easy. I could do that. But there certainly are times when I watch what they do and know this is their identity. And that is the reason why is they're he on, on that fucking stage. drugs? During the high flying acrobatics and seamless. <laughs> I can't even do this. During the high flying. <laughs> You swear to God, he's saying these words. I swear to God, this is the article here. This is not AI or Al or whoever wrote this. During the high-flying acrobatics or seamlessly strung together choreography, I never go, how stupid is this guy? If he falls, he's dead. We'd be dead if we tried that. But here's the thing. We're not them. We'll never be them. We weren't meant to be them. Omega possesses a steadfast confidence, which is a prerequisite for any talent at the top of their field. How is he confident? He just said he'll never be them. That belief, well, that's interesting. He's saying that he's not good enough for Cirque du Soleil. What do you think of that? I agree with him. That belief is rooted in his preparation. During Forbidden Door, that belief, which could have hindered someone unprepared or reckless in the moment, brought his match with Osprey to an entirely different level. Back to Omega. There are people who want to complain and put themselves on a pedestal by saying what we did was dangerous. Well, you think? <laughs> so I've been asked, why did we do it? It made more sense in the match and evoked emotion. And we both knew I would end up coming out of the move unscathed. Is there risk? Sure. There's always risk. Look at the way Mike Tyson boxed. His style was so dangerous. He stayed so close to his opponent. What was he doing boxing in style? Is that what it says? What was he doing boxing in style? Shouldn't he have fought more stick and move and waited for the counterpunch? Wouldn't that have been better for his brain? Didn't he understand how dangerous it was? But that's what made him Mike Tyson. No, he was too busy knocking other motherfuckers out. But that's what made him. He was never a goddamn surgeon. I don't know if he's any stupider now than he was 30 years ago. 
Did I miss a bunch of Mike Tyson getting knocked out? No, all of a sudden he went to Mike Tyson after they brought up that his real name is Tyson. I'm not sure what the yeah. connection there well, is. He, he was at Cirque du Soleil a minute ago now. Is he a dancer or is he a goddamn boxer? Well, going back to that comparison here, it is no different with Omega. To reach his absolute best, Omega must be afforded the space to create his own work. This is right before AEW instituted all those rules. <laughs> I must be given this space. Has, nobody has explained. Look, what is the Tiger driver supposed to look like? Does it end up with you just picking a motherfucker up and just dropping him freestyle on his head every time? Or is there a way that it actually looks like a wrestling move you'd mean to do? And if so, then why didn't they do it like that instead of just picking the aforementioned motherfucker up and dropping him right on his head? Don't tell me not to wrestle the way I know how to wrestle. Uh, well, is there a risk? Oh, that one writes itself. Is there a risk? Was there a risk when Mike Tyson was fighting within inches of space with? <laughs> I can't take the way this guy like thinks and talks. Was there a risk when Mike Tyson was fighting within inches of space between another championship level boxer throwing power punches? Of course. But Tyson was confident in his abilities, and he knew he was the best. So don't tell Mike Tyson how to box, and don't tell Tyson Smith how to wrestle. Oh, you aren't even close to being qualified. Shut the fuck up! Omega's fire embodies the passion he embeds into his craft. For Omega... He doesn't look like he would be passionate if somebody poured lighter fluid in his crotch and set it on fire. He would still have that same slow, dull-witted fucking look. For Omega, this is more than his job. It is his livelihood. Now. Wait a minute. Isn't that the same thing? <laughs> Hold on here a second. Why are you reading that? I'm going to... I'm going to the American Heritage Dictionary 3rd Edition. <laughs> Keep reading. I'll be back. Now, only days before AEW brings blood and guts to Dynamite, Omega returns to AAA for a rematch against Vikingo at Triple Mania. And then it goes into, uh, I have some quotes here. Let me scroll down a little bit. About Vikingo, have you found livelihood? Well, hold on. I, actually, we got living. That's close. Um. Living, another of the meanings is a manner or style of life, a livelihood, and a living, let's see, job, job, J, hold on. Those are uh, pieces of paper that you hear uh, for, yes. the, for the younger members of the audience who haven't heard this sound before. Well, as, uh, how else can you flip through the fucking dictionary? Job. A regular activity performed for payment, a position in which one is employed, a task that must be done, a specified duty or responsibility, a specific piece of work to be done for a set fee. Yep, job and livelihoods, living, pretty much the same thing. Okay, go ahead. Well, here's some quotes from Kenny about Vikingo. I had this opportunity with a star, someone who people around the globe will embrace. <sighs> And it was a matter of doing the hard introduction on our television in a main event position with no backstory. Says Omega, who is also one of AEW's original executive vice presidents. It was a tough position to suddenly have someone unknown to AEW issue a challenge. Looking back, it was very unique. I am always up for the challenge, and working with someone like Vikingo is always going to be a pleasure. We hadn't had a chance to mix it up. And I wanted that opportunity. You know, he speaks in English like I imagine he would in Japan trying to communicate with someone who didn't understand English. <laughs> like, it's like very basic ways of speaking, right? He's in, he's in such a habit of, of speaking to people whose English is a second language that it sounds like it's his too. And Vikingo is a guy that people around the globe are going to embrace. Possibly pickpockets. Being the one to introduce him to our fan base was a heavy responsibility, but I wanted to make sure that anyone criticizing that Vikingo didn't deserve that spot saw exactly who he was. Let's talk a little bit more about Vikingo and AAA. There are still a portion of fans who discredit the Lucha Libre style. To them, maybe it's too flippy, or fast, or looks like gymnastics. But this is an art form. 
Culturally, it's very significant to the people of Mexico. The style transcends the sport itself, and it is so prominent there. Lucha Libre is the... He's, perf- now, wait, he's not saying anything untrue there. No. And I have no argument with that statement that he just made. He's kind of just the, saying what anyone would know about Lucha Libre. <laughs> and the, the statement that I'm arguing with is that people around the globe will impre- embrace Vikingo because he ain't Rey Mysterio, as we'll talk about here later on. Go yeah, ahead. And that's really, you know, I'm going to stop there because the rest of this is all Vikingo. Uh, it's all about that. So I guess he was going to interview him about the Vikingo thing. And then the real story is about the Tiger Driver. And that got buried in the story about Vikingo. Because his his lips are chapped, along with various other parts of his anatomy, that people said, what is this stupid son of a bitch doing? Like they always say about his matches. What is this stupid son of a bitch doing? And he he tells, he basically, he makes a, a preemptive strike because that interview was done right before this list came out. Yeah. So he made a preemptive strike against his employer, saying, fuck you. I'll do what I want. Cartman. Kenny Cartman. Moxley did an interview with SI with the same writer saying that he's all for blood in every single match. And if you tell him that he needs blood to have a good match, that is his argument. He wants to bleed in every match. Omega does this interview defending the Tiger Driver. Don't tell me how to wrestle. Now that we're being told you're not allowed to do those pile drivers at all anymore. Not needing approval. They're banned. And the blood, you need permission every single time you do it. So they're certainly reacting to a lot of the public comments, it seems, that their top guys are making. You know, I remember when they came out and told us what the rules were when I was in second grade, a bunch of the kids didn't like them. What did they do? Well, they didn't follow them. And then the teacher had to spank them and call their parents. You think, but since you think Tony Khan should start calling the wrestlers parents? Well, he's already used several on the show. That's true. Trent's mom runs a cab service. So, but I'm afraid that Tony's not a good spanker. I'm afraid he doesn't have a lot of experience spanking people. You don't think Tony Khan could spank someone? Actually, I don't think he could either. Not I was about, well, how big is that person? How old are they? Are we talking about... <laughs> You know, five-year-olds, six-year-olds. 35-year-old blonde in a hotel room. Could he spank her? Oh, God, no. No. Not a chance. Probably doesn't even have his own paddle. Anyway. I'm happy to hear she got off easy. No, it it was not easy at all for her to get off because he (laughs) couldn't spank her. I guess in my eyes, she was being held captive by Tony (laughs) (laughs) Khan. I didn't think of the idea she wanted to be there. I'm sorry. I guess. What in the world is the matter with you thinking things like that about people doing things against Maybe Tony has a Facebook group where he offers people free tickets and he sends a car to pick them up and they end up in Tony Khan's hotel. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Either that or they, they end up as a part of a human remains ring. Just depends on what Facebook group you stumble across. <laughs> so 